We can't hear you, Will. I don't I think you I, 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 my mic muted. Don't, don't, okay. don't. That's not like in front of the guest. Yes. Do you see the box below you right now? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you <laughs> see, who is that? Below me? Uh, I think it's none is other that? than Survivor One World and Game Changers representative, Troy Zan. There you go. Only one person will ever be named Troy Zen, right? I hope so. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, I don't sure hope so. If there's another Troy Zen, I'll be uh, shocked. <laughs> <laughs> the name will never be forgotten. Welcome, everybody, to Survivor Stockwatch Episode 4, No Tears Left to Cry. I am Jack. That is Will. <laughs> and that is Troy Zen. We hey everybody! Yes. I like I like that intro too. It's kind of a catchy little tune you got going there with. <laughs> Thank you. The number one podcast on what Feedcast or something like that. Feed spot. Feed spot. Number one. So I I better step up. You better step <laughs> up. Well, let's go ahead and put you right ahead on the stage here. Let's not waste any time. Uh, it went from like short hair to long hair, like oh, and to from young spry guy to old scrapper. <laughs> nothing wrong with a little scrap. <laughs> little, little, nothing wrong with a little scrap. Absolutely. Uh, Chris says welcome. Uh, Chris is a loyal Stockwatch fan. We're glad to have you here again, Chris. Um, choice and you know, story history on the show. Two seasons. Uh, this is my island. Rocking the idol and game changers. <laughs> how have you been recently? You know, how, how's life going for you? I mean, good. I live south of Miami on 10 acres. I live in like in a, in a jungle and people never <laughs> believe me. And when they come here and visit or I show them like, oh, dude, you really do live in a jungle. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I still watch Survivor like a fan, even though I played twice. I still, you know, scream at the TV if somebody does something stupid or something crazy <laughs> happens. <laughs> it's just my own opinion of what's good, what's not, who's good, who's not. I don't, I can't keep track as well as I used to way back in the day with like certain people, the names and that kind of thing. So it's like, um, but yeah, I uh, and I'm busy with photography. I'm still a photographer. Um, I uh, got a job tomorrow, but it's pouring rain here and it's outside. So I'm like, oh, God, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> that's work. <laughs> um, I, I actually went back to Fiji in October and went to the island that I played basically the majority of my challenges on. It's called Mana. And it's where the tribal council is. It's where the majority of the challenges are. It's where the staff stays. We never, we don't know the staff stays there. When you're there, you're basically either blindfolded or sheltered from anything. So you always think that you're on a remote island with nobody on it. But the <laughs> island where they actually, you know, have the majority of those challenges um, is an island with like, you know, a hotel on it. And like, it's a village there. And I went back and saw the village and Everybody knows Survivor. They know, still know who I am. Don't scream with your name. So that was kind of cool. And I did that. I actually did that in 2018 as well. I went back, but I went back with Ty, and I went back, back with Michelle from his season and uh, oh. Winners at War. And she just kind of came along. She didn't know. She never played in Fiji. But we had, we had. I had a free airline ticket, so I so I was like, Hey, Michelle, you want to go to Fiji for free? And then we met up with Sebastian. And Jenna from the Ghost Island season, they had already been there. Yeah. So it was just a fun thing just to go back. And we actually went to the islands we lived on, which was super emotional because, you know, it's just weird to be back. There's no cameras, no nothing. But it's like, you know, the exact same trails. The the rocks look familiar. Like, oh, my God, we slipped right, we slipped right here. I made a whole, <laughs> like, like, mini movie and put it on YouTube. <laughs> That's 
I, that's got to be the feeling, you know, just yeah. the emotion coming. You spent days on those, uh, on oh, those yeah. Islands, well, spent days at those places. I'm 139, my set on on the on the one island. I think it's called Monteriki. It's actually a, some people call it Castaway Island because they actually filmed Castaway on that same island, just down but down the shore. That we couldn't go down there. We're kind of mm-hmm. they kind of limit you to like a like a two mile radius. You know, the <laughs> is up. And no, Castaways can't go past this point, and we're like. Everyone's like, "What's that? You can't go past it. That's bullshit. What's over there?" <laughs> you look over the hill, like it's like you know, because you know the crews over there probably eating potato chips and whatever. Probably so they just they sneak over there in the morning, look but there's always somebody like monitoring us. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> that was fun. So I'm, yeah, I'm always and you know, I, I'm I'm still a super fan. I still you know, like I said, I'm I always watch the show. I always like, in a sense, like train for it because you never know you can get it all you know well well you were gonna ask troy's and something yeah so i was gonna when you mentioned like the whole trips to uh fiji inviting michelle one of my questions was you know is there anyone in the part of the survivor community that you wouldn't really expect to be friends with but that you're like you have a really good connection with you know because it's not that I feel like you and Michelle would clash. It's just right. y'all were never part of the same seasons. Right. And so, you know, I, I would never picture just Troy Zane and Michelle going to Fiji. <laughs> right. um, yeah. Just yeah. randomly, <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, I'm kind of, you know, it's kind of weird. Like Once you play Survivor and once you're in this Survivor kind of family, you become like you get to know everybody. You go to different charity mm-hmm. events. You meet people to different places and kind of everybody knows everybody at some point. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I'm actually really, really good friends with Tarzan from my first season, which was completely <laughs> expected because we're just not anything alike. I mean, he's like super genius IQ 160, you know, um, retired world-class, you know, plastic surgeon. And, you know, it, it, the, when you have conversations with him, he uses words that are just, you, you can't understand what he's saying. And I would just say, <laughs> yeah. what, what the hell you're talking about? Especially we talk medical stuff, but we talk all the time. I've been to his house like four or five times. He lives in Houston. Mm-hmm. It's in this like wild looking mansion. It's like, uh, looks like Disneyland, Universal Studios, and <laughs> Jurassic Park all down gi- oh, in. Like, he's got huge giant statues of like, he has like the the uh, the Predator. Remember that movie, the first Predator? Yeah, big yeah. Size, life size Im- thing of a, the Predator in his house. It's like ten feet. I, and he's I got, wouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> he's got like dinosaurs, and he's he he's built different things. He's he built this like uh, castle Tourette where you know like Rapunzel lets her hair down. Like look at his castle. It's this one area where it's like you walk up these spiral stairs, and there's bats hanging from the ceiling and vampire and i'm fascinated by it. i talked to him quite a bit but you and people will probably be surprised by that um mm. also i thought i i'm still good friends with sandra talked with her quite a bit people might not think that we're friends or whatever but i mean i'm outside the show i'm probably a little bit different like i'm really friends with a lot of people i mean i don't really have any answers. yeah i uh recently kind of became a little bit better friends with crazy carolyn <laughs> Uh, <laughs> she like called me up finally i was like i because at the first in the beginning like if i usually like every season i'll pick one person out and i'm like i really like this person either they're crazy or they're fun to watch or i think they're gonna win mm-hmm. and i'll just you know get their phone number and call them and so i try to get a hold of her right away but she kept, <laughs> she kept like not blocking it but it's like i finally said Carolyn, answer your phone. It's Troy's and she goes, "Oh, uh, what do you call me?" And, you know, in the morning, blah blah blah. So she calls me back like one o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I'm like I go to bed at like, farmers hours. I can wake up like at you know four thirty five in the morning. So I'm like, I answer this call. So I've talked to her a few times, and then I talked to her and Carson actually at the same time. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, um, I've had people come to the house. Uh, Andrea came down and visited the jungle last year. Took her out to the Everglades. She wanted to learn photography. Nice. Went to the Everglades and went to different and down to the Florida Keys. And then Ty has been. I'm still good friends with Ty. He's been the, to down down to the house. Uh, Christina from my first season. Jay from my first season. Wow. Um, I still see the Culpeppers all the time. I just saw them. I had to drive up to North Florida to do a job, so I stopped in Tampa and saw them for a night. Brad and Monica. 
That's played cool. with them, and I'm really good, close with their kids who, you know, both play, both two kids played college football. One daughter plays at NYU basketball. So I'm still like, I talk to Monica all the time. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'd say people might not expect it, but I'm trying to think who, who would they, Russell Hans once in a while, people have never. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, oh God. The oh, lightning no, strike. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You might have got oh, a it's not Survivor stock watch without something going wrong. That it's not. Oh, it's true. No. Uh, uh, all right. Technical difficulties for our guest. He did say it was storming. Um, so my, before um, you know, we'll come back soon. Uh, do we want to hop to anything? Start talking about anybody? Uh, we can we can talk about the episode, and then once Troyzen comes back, we can also wrap around to at the very end if there's any more questions that we have or y'all have for Troyzen. Um, we can also answer them at the very end. Um, let's yeah. talk about the episode though. Um, I agree. No, <laughs> right. Troyzen will come back. Um, <laughs> yeah, this episode. I mean, again, just the Bono episode, right? Like, yeah, uh, it was. Like a 10 visibility, if I could give him a 10. Um, and very, very, very sympathetic towards him. Um, and I've seen a lot of discourse on this because I think they really tried to give Banu this hero. There he is. Welcome back. Hey, welcome back, Joey Zan. You, you, I like I said, I thought we were gonna lose power, and sure enough, I did. So I basically <laughs> just went on my phone. <laughs> we appreciate we appreciate your time. We were um we were getting into talk about the episode, and we can uh, wrap around with some uh, last couple questions. Uh, as like, we get to you, I don't know if you guys want me to eventually go back to my computer because I can't see squat without. <laughs> Look, I got my glasses on. <laughs> no worries, no worries. We'll uh, bring it up as I go, but. Yeah, the episode really. Uh, <laughs> right, Chris. Um, the episode really um, was very sympathetic towards Banu, and it really made us feel that he was the tragic character, tragic hero um, yeah. of this episode, and maybe of the early part of the season. Um, when a lot of people may not have agreed with that. I've seen a lot of discourse online about not really um, being sympathetic towards Banu. And to me, at least, um, it's a give and take, right? You want someone to be positive, and Banu was a clear fan of the show. You want right. to put him in a positive light. Right. But at the same time, his gameplay, there was a, a little bit left to be desired. <laughs> there, yeah. there was some... There were some well, definite mistakes uh, hanging around there. So, yeah, I, I think it's one of those where it's like everyone wants someone that's like, you know, a fan of the show and all excited to be there. But then it's also like I haven't seen a lot of guys that really you almost felt like, dude, do you really know what, how to play here? Like, do you, do you understand, like, the show really? Like, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. different. I mean, I, you know, I'm the same. I'm out there for the adventure for sure. You know, I mean, I don't think about the money all the time like him. I can understand that point. But there's also, like, do you understand, you know, what, that you can't just say, <laughs> I mean, we, I played, Leaf was kind of like that when I played my first season. Remember Leaf, Little Leaf? Yeah. He, he was out there, like, he just wanted, it felt like just like camp, you know, like, Leaf, do you understand, like, you can't just blab out secrets to everybody. This is it. This is like, a game of deceit. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, part part of me, I I, I feel for. How do you pronounce the guy's name again? Banu, 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 Banu. Right? Banu. Yeah, and I mean, I I was I'm happy that a guy like that who's a super fan can like actually get on the show and experience Survivor because it's one thing to watch it and it's one thing to be there and really experience it, and it is probably in his mind. I think watching it, I think anybody that doesn't play, that just watches, probably thinks, oh, it, I have an idea what it's going to be like and how to strategize, what to do. And it just changes. When you get there, it's just nothing like what you thought it was going to be. So I feel like maybe that's what he ran into. Like, it really was way more. It's just, you're, it's on your brain all the time. It's just way more for you to think about than what you think. Then you're just watching it, you know, one hour each week and then, talking about it, it's it's just different when when you're there 
and you're having to deal with stuff 24 hours a day, thinking like, who's saying what, who's doing what? I'm paranoid. Those people are walking off. The camera's following them, so it must be important. Do I follow the camera guys? Do I not? Do I look, you know, like, you, 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 if you don't know it's a TV show, when you're there, you're kind of behind the eight ball. You, you, got, you have to know, mm -hmm. like, you have to think, like, this is a TV show. What, 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 what you know, does the audience need to see? And what do they know? You know, if they, if, if the cameras aren't there, then it's like, not, that's not important. You know, it's no big deal. So if you kind of know that going out and I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a photographer, so I kind of had an idea, like, you know, did it happen again? Oh, no. no. Did I cut out? Oh. Well, you're all good. Oh, I am. Okay. I was going to try to, yeah. I was going to try to go back oh, to the, the computer okay. so I can see. <laughs> uh will give us uh your thoughts on the episode uh I, I feel like it was kind of the end of and not of end of an era but like the first of act March. of yeah, yeah end of the first act of survivor 46 i feel like the way the modern era survivor has really been running i feel like it's less about the whole season narrative it's more about these these acts right so like last season it was like the downfall of lulu and then, you know, Emily and, like, the battle between all, like, the big targets and then Dee's coronation. I feel right. like this was the end of Banu and I really think the end of Yanu losing. Um, I think mm. Q, Kenzie, and Tiffany are all very competent players in their own rights. And I feel like they aren't going to lose any more challenges. And because of that... I feel like we're going to start focusing more on the destruction of Nami or maybe Sega breaking apart um, mm. more than anything else. And I'll get to more about Sega and Nami in a minute. All right. Yeah, Metroid. absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you. I think this episode, I mean, I think you're absolutely right. I think it goes in arcs and um, we've certainly seen the end of one because um, you know, for as much uh, crap as people gave Banu, he demanded the screen. I, I saw a statistic. He had more confessionals in his four episodes than Parvati did in all of Micronesia, the season that she won. That and, is... so, and, you know, it, you know, it, it clearly Banu was meant to be a part of this. Here we go. Get Troy's end back on the computer if I can move my mouse. There it is. Okay, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah. No more lightning bolts hitting the house. <laughs> Let's pray. Yeah. Let's pray again. All right. But yeah, I end of an arc and we move on to a new one. And I think you're right. And I think the tribe that will likely be of the most kind of uh, contention in terms of going to the next tribal is Nami because we actually yeah. got shown a really important scene of an additional target with soda. But beyond that, Hunter is, you know, he's still Survivor MacGyver. He's still doing super well in the challenges. He's the guy around camp. And he got a little bit of um a little bit of stuff this episode, uh, just to show us that he was still still cooking. Uh he's just chilling today. But if you take a look at the picture, there is a tiny little square on the right side, and that is Joe Anglum. And yeah. for those who know Joe, you bring him to the merge because he wins every challenge, and then once he loses an immunity, you yeah. kick him out. You're, you guys are exactly right. That's what I was just going to say. Like you can, that kind of a player is like doesn't realize he's great for the team and doing all of these things and showing up. There's got to be a point where you got to tell yourself back off, like because if I make the merge, he's like an Aussie. Make the merge. Who's the first target? You know, Joe or Joe first target. I mean, anybody that's like this, you know, big guy that's doing well in challenges. People don't say anything, but they keep that in their brains, mm -hmm. and it's like yeah. it's great for the team, and it's kind of like great we can go into the merge with numbers because he's helped, but that guy's gonna get targeted because. People just, they don't say nothing, but he's the classic target. And you can tell because he's like, even he kind of, the way he talks, like you know, he's going to 
win challenges and the, yeah, I'm like, bro, you're screwing up for your, your individual game. You're, you're just putting a target on your back. See, I, I would agree, but I feel like Hunter could be in a season where all the cards align, where he can squeak through the merge. Because um, I think about Jonathan Young from 42. Yeah. He had quite possibly the most impressive um, pre-merge uh, challenge performance, right? In that one season, oh, one episode where he was like yeah, throwing. Yeah, absolutely. I kept thinking the same thing. Oh, God, this guy's putting a target. It's putting a target. Oh, yeah. He really sneaked, snuck it through. I mean, at the merge, he really did well. So, Yeah, with Nami and the the dynamic there where he's, ju- he's doing just enough to always be in everyone's good graces. Yes, he's being targeted by Venus, but Venus is also – targeting like half the cast and like half the tribe and like <laughs> yeah i don't put i don't fault hunter i think there's also a lot of other athletic people i think q and tiffany are both very athletic uh in their own rights i think charlie and ben aren't slouches either on Seagum. and yeah, so I, yeah q's the kind of guy who who, who will, <laughs> will show all his cards too he won't back yeah down. he'll be and he's he's almost too he's almost worse because he is the kind of guy who's like, let me tell you how to play. Let me tell you mm-hmm. how to, let me tell you. This, right. is, this is what we're going to do and you're going to follow me. And after a while, if someone's like, I'm not following, I mean, I'll listen to it, but I'm not following anybody. It's like. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. So it, it's definitely uh, going to be interesting to watch that out because while Hunter may appear to be in a good spot now, um, that physical presence is something to keep note of, but it's ultimately comes down to, the social game, I think. Uh, Troy Zan, I have a question specifically um, pertaining to your experience with Brad uh, Brad Culpepper on right. Game Changers. Right. You know, he won five immunity challenges, tied for the record. Um, did you ever get that feeling that he was going to be a threat to your game specifically? Well, yeah, like not not at the merge. Because I made like a kind of a pact with six. I'm like, okay, this is good. I know I'm dialed in with six people, which will get me to number six spot. I always thinking like, what spot can I get to? If I get to five, win one immunity, I'm at four. Or if I had, I had an idol at that point too. So I'm like, you know, and I knew I had met Brad through Monica for my first first season. So I'm like, Mm -hmm. this is a guy to have around. You know, he's going to vote. We're going to vote the same. This is great. But then when he started winning, I'm like, she's. I'm, I'm really with this guy like but it's like i you know i'm not going to get looked at i'm going to look like you know like a typical what people think is like you're following somebody because mm-hmm. the way they edit stuff when someone wins they put them first and they make everything that comes out of their mouth like this is what we're going to do and that's what you do as opposed to if i made a suggestion to brad hey brad what about this person and it's, you never see it it's not on air and then he says oh yeah try let's do this and then it looks like it's his decision so you know, it's one of those where I thought if he there was there was one time where he almost lost, and I'm like I'm thinking. And he said to me, I told him about my idol. He goes, I think I'm going to have to use your idol if I lose. And that's where I went. Uh, I don't. Think <laughs> I don't know. There was one moment where it's like if he would have lost. I think it was the ball challenge where I had the ball between his two sticks, and we were back. Oh, yeah. And I I was doing pretty well in that. And I thought, like, if I would have won, that would have changed it. Brad would have went home and would have changed. And then, you know, but as survivors, we all do the woulda, coulda, shouldas. If I, if this, yeah. this would have happened, then I would have done this and this, you know. So it's always like, you know, in hindsight, you think if, if this would have happened, yeah. But there was a moment where Brad was my closest ally. But there there's also, do, do I want to win? And I remember actually talking to, you know, one of the producers in a confessional and they're like, what are you going to do? with?" And I was like, this is the worst case scenario. Cause I'm such a good friends with like their family. It's like, they're going to hate my guts forever. Like, and I got, you get emotional out there cause you're tired. I got like tears in my eyes. Like, oh, how, how am I going to, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Vote Brad out at, if he loses. And I just don't know how to do it. It's like, it's, uh, you know, I'm going to be, you start thinking like outside the game, you know, and I'm sure yeah. that it's the same like with, with Bonu. Like he get, you know, you get emotional and you're thinking like, you know, what can I do? What can I get? You know, and it, it's it's tough to it's tough to see almost every player like how they really are feeling in just an hour, hour and a half, two hour episode. It's like because yeah. you know, we're filmed twenty four hours a day and you guys see 
a small percentage of what we say, what we're doing. And I mean, you know, the, the cameras, you know, they can take a reaction shot of my face, which is a reaction shot I did three days ago to someone that someone's saying something. And it looks like, oh, he reacted to that when I didn't react to that at all. So it's kind of like <laughs> where, yeah, Brad would have been tough. It would have been, I, I don't know. But again, then I'm thinking always to myself, like, the only way to really win Survivor, it truly, and I've played twice, you have to be selfish. You just cannot think of somebody else. At, really, at some point, you have to just be like, listen, if someone's going to hate me outside the game or I'm going to lose friends or whatever, uh, I'm going to have a million dollars and smoking a cigar in Costa Rica. So you take it and it's like, well, so to me, it's like, I've got to play a third time. So I, I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely right. And that's absolutely right for our next player, uh, Liz, who um, this episode we didn't get a whole lot from. But in this episode, uh, she did comment on Soda being a potential target. And she just went, that works for me. Going with the classic anyone but me strat, maybe. Um, she is riding. Low on the tribe, front. Right? Yeah. She, yeah. yeah. We're doing it tribe by tribe. Well. Okay. Yeah, we're going with Nami is, first. Liz, is, is she the cocky kind of one who thinks she's all that in a bag of chips? Is that her? Well, it depends, right? Uh, she does have multiple businesses, if you didn't know. Oh, okay, that's the one. <laughs> I, I, like, yeah, I, that's a bad, that, that's a wrong, you can't say that. <laughs> and as Chris would say, I believe Liz owns your photography business, if, if I'm oh, not mistaken. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, My island, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, Will, the island. Uh, well, what are your thoughts on Liz this episode? I mean, Liz now is the same Liz as the Liz episode one, two, and three. I feel like mm -hmm. she's she's someone who's not really relevant to the current story. But with each passing episode, I get a little bit more hope that she could have, like, one breakout episode where she, like, really shines for just one episode, you know, gets, like, soda out, and then, you know, flames out right after. Um, <laughs> because she went from being almost dead last, I think, only beating Banu, um yeah. to now beating out um two other people whom i will not say and spoil what do the stock uh, numbers mean over there you guys when i'm looking at these stuff ah, like, like, <laughs> tell, me, tell me what fit is 15 high low 12 what, what low. Is yeah it? so um the higher the number the worse you're doing um oh, okay. but okay. we haven't actually and I mean, I like, so no, somebody that's won you think they're the, gonna win yeah absolutely okay. Okay. um yeah, I, I would put her 50. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you guys' stock number on her. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty low right now. It's riding low. And I, th I think Will's right. I think um, a potential breakout could be coming. But, Will, I, I was thinking um, in my slumber the past couple of days, uh, we, may, we make promises every episode. Uh, last episode, we made a promise we would have uh, this image for Banu. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I think next episode we should officially make a rule book on how we're ranking people. Are we ranking them where we think they're going to place? How they're going to do? I think we should make a rule book, and I think, I think so too. Cool. So I, I think, think it's worth it. I think the problem is too the stocks, at least in my opinions, they change as the season goes on. Because at first it's just longevity. It's like who right. who I think will go far. That's why I had Tevin as number one in the first episode. So it's, um, it's not it's not episode to episode where their stock is. It's basically kind of like where it's kind of a general like what they might. Okay, right now this one looks like number one. They probably could win number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we're we're kind of it's a little on the whim, you know. This just, person is tough. That's that's yeah. tough before a merge, honestly. Like, yeah, oh yeah, give so many stock oh, wow. merge because so much stuff changes. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Shall we continue? With Soda must go to. <laughs> um, with the uh, go to tribe, I believe, from fans versus favorites, Caramon. Um, Soda had a rough episode, in my opinion. Um, maybe not as bad as her second episode, but a rough episode where it was very clear um, that she wanted us to believe that she was on the bottom because every time. She would talk with somebody um, and, like, try to really affirm something. And in her head, she's thinking it's going great. And they would give each other looks. They weren't really agreeing. And it came to the point where Tevin, Soda's pretty much number one ally, said, 
Yeah, so, soda may uh, may need to go. And Chris has a question for you, Troy. And I don't know if you can uh, see that or not, but you were you almost on Caramon? Uh, Cochrane season. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I was. Well, they they called me like I got back. That's when I played One World. We played until September, so we kind of played late. Ooh. And about three weeks later, the casting called me and said, "Hey, Troy, said, you know, I think that One World you're gonna be like a standout." uh would you want to play again i was like oh my god i just got back like are you serious <laughs> but i'm like yes i'll play but they didn't tell they don't tell you anything they just you know okay well you know we'll, we'll just let you know but you know they're not going to really know anything till like january and this was like end of september so right. things just went on and i little by little i you know you they ask you more questions and then you find out little by little who who might be on and Cochran started calling me just uh, like a lot. And I thought he was just being nice. I'm like, Cochran's called me. God, this is awesome. And I didn't realize, like, oh, he's going to be on the show. And it wasn't until my finale that they got, like, uh, Cassie finally said, you know, hey, listen, you know, you, you didn't make this season, but we're sure we're probably going to bring you back for something. But, you know, I think they were waiting to see how Malcolm did. And so if Malcolm, oh, yeah. Malcolm would have, like, scrapped out and not gone as far as he did, I probably would have been on caramelon so yeah, I, mean, I, I, was, I was up for um the net i was up for blood versus water uh you you, you were up for a lot of seasons water, my, i mean we i was closer on that one than than caramelon i mean they had basically called me and my brother and said hey send in your clothes and i'm like dude send in your clothes you're like a week out so i'm like yeah. worried and then they, they cool. close at the last minute and like oh no you know some things changed and we made a change. Now there's going to be four people from your season. That's really not fair to you. It's not fair to everybody else. Yeah. You know, so guess what? You, we can have you as an alternate. And I was like, fuck that. I'm not an alternate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Troy's <laughs> name, bro. You know, play or not. So, Come on, man. They, they basically cast uh, Cat at the last minute because they wanted the big, uh, they, they no. wanted the big brother. They wanted Hayden Moss, right? They wanted the big brother person in there. So they're like, we're, we're casting Cat and, and and her boyfriend. So I'm like, damn. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. And then I was, you know, then there were second chances and setting the audience waiting. <laughs> but I knew, I knew in that season I wasn't in before they even did anything. So you got there though, and that's yeah, and that's the dream. Always, always and close. That. Like, but honestly, out of all those, I would have rather I would have played Game Changers if you would give me the choice of all those. Because I mean, playing with all the superstars to me like was way better than ever playing Caramelin, Blood versus Water. Second, second chance would have been fun because it's like you know returners. But I felt like you know, come on, Tony, Sandra, Sri, Ozzy, I'm all with some Survivor royalty right I'm there. Like, come on, man. It's like you know, and and I feel like you know. I went further than than a lot of them, and I'm so I can say to myself, I actually beat Sandra. I actually beat Tony. I actually <laughs> beat Marie. I beat Ozzy. Really? Oh, okay. I'll take you it. Well, <laughs> the next Richard well. Hatch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will, Will, any thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, Soda, kind of like Liz. There's not much to really remark about Soda. Uh, the fact that the edit has gone out of its way to kind of go against her multiple times already. You know, we have the 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 camp sing-alongs from episode two, and then Hunter being like, I hate singing. <laughs> and then Soda wanting to be like the queen of camp morale, only mm. for everyone to just say, like, yeah, Soda has to go. Um, you know, I, I pretty much ruled out Soda already, and the fact that she got below Liz is a Liz little yeah. yeah, I don't see anything from episode one on that makes her look like she's got any kind of winners at it because you see there's a few little if you have if you listen close enough you'll hear you'll pick up like huh that sounds yeah. like a little bit of a Tracy, winner you're a natural on this show that's what we talk yeah. about all the time <laughs> that is what well, I, I mean about. i i you know playing you, you know how it's filmed so you know how it, in a sense it's edited so mm -hmm. i look at the smallest things like oh yeah it looks like the you know, winners that it's, it's right. one, one word let, let's let's move, test, let's move for something you know that you can pick up. Let's test it a little bit, Ben, because in some people's opinion, uh, Tevin had a great episode. Yeah. Would you say uh, this was more of a like a winner esque episode for Tevin, or do you think it may be something else? No, I I mean it could. Well, I, honestly, they don't. 
I, they don't really show kind of winner edit until after the merge for for sure. They don't. They won't really give away a lot. A lot of times, they really the, a lot of winners don't get shown hardly at all, or not much of an edit, like a lot. And especially they're doing that a lot in the in the new era, where it's like oh, Erica, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, just out of nowhere, like and, you know. Well, even Gabler, the, the gobbler, the, you know, like he's like wasn't exactly like, oh yeah, this guy's gonna win. Like I'm just, you know, where before you can kind of start to get an idea of two or three people. But you know, Tevin's, I think he had a good episode. I mean, he definitely potential. I mean, I'd put him in in the top five. Will I, yeah. we, we moved them down to nine? Why? Why do you think we moved them down to nine here? Well, it's like what Trezen was saying, right? They don't really show the winners hardly at all. And so when Tevin started the entire season with a minute-long confessional about Survivor, it makes it hard to say this guy is the winner because it's just way too obvious, at least in my opinion. I do think Tevin, I forgot about that. They're not going to yeah. give a winner that much time. No. Right. I do think he is the main narrator, at least on Nami right now. And I think... I think that's in part because one, his position. I think two, he's just very well spoken. I think he can articulate himself very, very well, which leads to better confessionals. Um, I think they'll to always, like the whole. They'll, they'll always pick people that are good at because some yeah. are good in casting, and then they you think they have potential. Then you get out there, it's a whole different ball game, and the producers start to find out who's really good on camera and who's good in confessionals, and they'll go back mm -hmm. to those people, and they'll they want to keep the audience dialed in, so they'll yeah. manipulate the audience to think certain things and listen to like one or two people. You know, same with like that Ben guy; he's kind of a character, so they'll show you know and. Then, and you know, of course, Banu, he had a story, so then he's all, you know, they, they want to they want to kind of fool you a little bit, but they also want you to be entertained. And so Tevin's, to me, is entertaining so far. And it was really, really nice to see um, such a, just a great backstory with him and his father um, and, you know, yeah. uh, cleaning and gunning the fish. Yeah. Uh, like, and, that's the, and that's the thing that I think a lot of people get maybe wrong about Survivor in that these personal moments don't matter. We only want the game. And I think it's really important to see human beings out there on an island starving and just giving their emotions. You know, there's certain like tiny little moments like uh, gunning a fish or filleting a fish could be really important, it's, as was Tevin uh, this episode. Troy, do you do you have any moments like that where you just go to the confessional and you're like, this little moment reminded me of something back oh, home. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm kind of bummed that we never got our Olympic moments during ice season. They never cut back. <laughs> Troy's animal was a kid. He did this. And they show, you know, we're doing something, whatever. But, <laughs> Photos. Well, I mean, okay. I'm glad they do it now because they have an hour and a half to do it. Before, when it's just an hour episode, I'm like, they don't need the Olympic moments. We understand everyone's got a backstory. Everyone has some kind of story to tell that's either sad or good or, you know, become that this is how you became the person that you were. But to mm -hmm. me, I just want to watch the show and I want to watch the dynamics of survivor. I don't really want, need the Olympic moment, <laughs> which I call it where they cut back and, you know, did so much. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> but what's your question? I, I get, I get a sidetrack. Yeah. I mean, did you, did you have any moments out there, um, both in one world and game changers where you were just oh, sitting yeah. there? For sure, like where it's like, you know, I th there's definitely moments where because you really feel alone because one, you can't trust anybody, not like somebody that's in your family and you're really right. alone. I mean, you're cut off. So you never see a TV, a radio, nothing. No one really talks to you. Even like confessionals are short. Camera guys don't say nothing. You really feel alone. So like and if you're alone in your tribe or you're at the bottom, you're really alone. So Mm -hmm. Start thinking about your family or some of them to remind me of, of the family. There was this scene that they cut out in Game Changers where Ozzy went out and he caught, he was catching fish and he brought back like a a uh, sea ray, right? Or a, what, you know, mm -hmm. and they, they're good to eat, but he brought it back and set it down the thing. He goes, Hey, well, you know, will you slice it up? Well, I'm going to go back out. And I go, Yeah, okay. And he had already like jabbed it. So it was dead. I flip it over and there's a baby freaking little sea ray underneath. And it was his guess his mom. I'm like, oh my god, oh. god, be kidding me! Like, I was so sad. Like this poor little baby Ray is like relying on his mother to take him around. Now it's dead, and it reminded me of I raised a family of marmoset monkeys, 
So I think about my monkeys, how I would feel. I got all teary eyed to Andrea stand. I'm like, oh my God, like this is terrible. Like, so I took the ray and I flip, kind of scraped him up, put him on my machete and sent him in the water. And he started flopping around backwards. I'm like, oh, he can't even swim. He's not even like ready to swim yet. And I'm like, I have to, this ray has to live. If he dies, I'm just, it's going to be the saddest thing ever. I mean, even though we're starving, I don't oh. know. I'm still like, and big There's still some humanity in there. Yeah, I won't love her, you know. Even though, like, whatever, I I, I will kill a chicken if I'm starving. But like that poor little Ray was just helpless, and I'm kept going trying to push him in. He's like, she goes, "What are you doing?" I said, "He's got to swim," and he needs to start flapping his little little things. And like, oh, come on, Ray, come on!" And he finally did like two strokes. He made it out up over the wave and swam away. I'm like, "Oh my god!" I told this story like an hour later to one of the producers, the girl. I started crying, totally started crying. I go, I'm sorry, forgive me. She goes, no, no, that's why we love you because you tell these stories. It's like emotional shit. So, you know, yeah, it's definitely easy to get emotional out there just over even the person that you feel like is the hardest. I mean, Brad Culpepper is like this strong NFL football player, and he started talking about Monica once and just got all – I just choked. He couldn't even finish his sentence. And, you know, it's definitely – I mean, you're extra tired. You sleep a total of two or three hours a night maybe – you barely are eating, you know, like, I mean, a handful of rice. Oh, I, I know. I met Amy. I think Amy, well, Amy, weren't you at um, Hearts Reality? I think. I think that was Amy. It looked like her anyway. Um, so, yeah, you definitely get emotional, like, over over stuff. It's, a, you know, it just, it's, it's. Um, I have, I have, you know, every day that you're there, you wake up and, you know, I woke up in the, early in the morning. No one's up. I go down to the beach. You just think about you know, your own life back home and, you know, what you don't ha have there and how easy it is at home. And you just don't realize like, wow, you know, but then there's other parts where you're like, maybe I can change some things. I, I don't really need my phone all the time. I don't need to constantly be, you know, doing this. It's like, I'm enjoying like nature, just the simplest things. I'm just living in, in a shelter. I have fire, I have food and I'm having conversations and I'm being a human. Uh, this is life. Like, and you're like, Maybe I can do some of those things, you know, when I get back home. And it changes you like that. That's so, awesome. Yeah. We go to Venus. Uh, Venus did not, uh, was not here this episode. Uh, so we have the ghost picture makes its return. <laughs> um, nothing, ba nothing bad with having an episode where you aren't hanging out in the spotlight. You know, it just, just wasn't really that important to the episode. But it's good that there is another target in soda on our tribe. Will, do you agree? Yeah, but I just think it's interesting how Venus was targeting every single person on the tribe, like, was talking mad about, uh, like, everyone except for, like, Randon um, mm -hmm. in the first few episodes. And now whenever there's a target uh, on Soda, we do not hear anything from Venus. And I think that might be important to know. Uh, so I, I hear a lot of people saying, like, Venus is either the main character or, or the like, a winner – I personally disagree. I don't think she's making it that far, but uh, it's still it was a decent enough episode for Venus, considering that she was not shown at all. Yeah, yeah I don't see Venus as a winner. I definitely see her like she's the villain kind of person. Then. <laughs> Even though Jeff doesn't like villains anymore, which I heard some on some podcast that he doesn't like villains. I'm like, what are you talking about? You gotta have villains. It's like yeah. good versus evil. Who? No one's gonna watch like Kumbaya all the time. So absolutely. He, yeah. She's definitely got that villainous kind of, you know, vibe to her. So, and, and that's good. People like, because, you know, people want to either dislike or like a, a villain, you know. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to move on to Sega, but before we do, um, we're going we're gonna to throw a little plug at the top right. Um, we got new merch for the spring. Yeah. We yeah. just posted it today on the Instagram, um, but please get some shirts. We're making some sales we're really excited um just to keep the podcast growing uh and, and again this is part of the uh what is it the before uh the now and then uh week of survivor now so oh yeah you know i gotta gotta make it big so now we move to ben uh who's another ghost this episode but he, you know he was still shown uh, a little bit and uh, Troy, uh, you said this earlier in the episode, but you're definitely right. I mean, he's definitely more of that character kind of guy, but I think he's a lot more strategic and yeah. a lot more wired into the game than I a agree. lot of people may. Yeah. I, I agree. 
on the I first mean, you know, he is the character. I you, you can tell that he's. I feel like he's doing other things. Like he's he's very aware of every everyone, and I mm -hmm. think his little goofiness and some of that is just a little bit of a show to throw people off. Like to you know, you want to kind of not be known as the smartest person and you don't want to let everyone know how much you know you kind of like played and i think he's doing that a little bit i mean i kind of did the same thing i mean i always say oh i'm out here i just have i'm just crazy uncle troy's and don't bother me don't, i don't know what i'm doing so you you don't want everybody to really you know think that you have the ability to 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 win it's always it's to play Survivor and to get far, you always have to almost be like just middle ground in a sense because you can go hard in the beginning, but you're going to get targeted. And you can try to think that you're, you know, organizing and you're at the top of the tribe. People are always going to figure out who's at the top and who's at the bottom. I don't care what they say. You know, if someone says, like they start saying, we're going to do this and this is what we want. And here's what you should do. Like, <laughs> like a, Jay, um Ben got one confessional, but uh, we still gave him a one on the visibility. Uh, but yeah, you, you never yeah, you know. Been like so, he's at so now he's at six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. six. Yeah, yeah, that's a good spot. I would put Ben. At he's six. he's floating right above the middle. Uh, do we think he'll go that far necessarily? No, he could go a little bit earlier. Could go a little bit later. But um, yeah, I don't know how great he is would be an individual immunities. He doesn't mm -hmm. seem like he's extraordinary, like Mr. Yeah. Puzzle Maker or Mr. Athlete. <laughs> or, you know, like in the beginning of of the merge, it's always going to be a little more physical stuff. You know, you stand on a pole, to take a bucket bucket of water up, pour it in, do this. You know, it's it's a little more physical stuff, and then they'll start doing more and more puzzles towards the end, or something that's a little more for you know somebody that's got a little more of a brain that's still there after 30, whatever. Well, I'm, <laughs> sorry. I'm still on 39. Day, like, I, I always forget. It's only 26. I'm like 26. <laughs> ah, we'll talk, yeah, whatever. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, <laughs> Charlie, the uh, proclaims Taylor Swift fan, um, screams Taylor Swift as he jumps off the, yeah, uh, <laughs> jumps off the, <laughs> um, in the challenge. Will, uh, what did you, oh, well, okay. <laughs> Will, what did you think of Charlie's episode? I think, I mean, it's interesting because we did hear him kind of undermine uh, Maria this episode. I think that was the bit. big takeaway because, you know, episode two, we kind of get this Denise and Malcolm relationship. And then we hear nothing about that. And then now that it's back, we're kind of seeing Charlie undermine Maria. Um, and... At first, I want to say that that means like Charlie might be the player that makes it further. He could be the Denise in this relationship. Mm -hmm. But we just don't get enough of Charlie individually. I think that's my big fear with Charlie. I think he has all the makings to go far. But to win out, you as Troy said, you have to be selfish. You have to, you know, put yourself first. And we don't really see a lot of intention when Charlie does that. It's just, hey, I'm in the middle now of this of the Sega tribe. And now I'm with Maria. Um, and Troy Zan, I have a question. Are you a Taylor Swift fan? Are you a Swifty? Are you a big Swifty, Troy Zan? No, not like at all. Be. I, and not because I don't like her singing. I mean, I've never really, I've never been really like a fan of her music in general. But I am a huge. Uh, I, 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 I say Oakland Raiders because I'm still an Oakland Raider. Vegas, Las Vegas Raider fan. And ever since she started going out with the Kansas City Chief, who's our biggest Ooh. rival. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah. Mahomes, <laughs> Kelsey, I hate those guys. So I don't like, I don't like Taylor Swift. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> now, Not, Ariana Grande, she, uh, I'll, I'll, no problem. Absolutely. <laughs> no, no, Metallica, on the other hand. We'll hop back to Ben for a second. Metallica fan instead? I would, well, no. Well, I, yeah, I do like the fact that he does play the guitar and he's like, you know, like, you know, Metallica. And I'm not really, I'm more like, you know, Leonard Skinner, old school, like way back in the day, you know, like Freebird. Van yeah. Van Freebird, come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a break. Van Halen, solo. I mean, there's all, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, old school. So, but, you know, I'm sure Ben can crank out Freebird. <laughs> I would like to, I would like to see that and hear that. Uh, we go to Jem, um, who, Far and away established herself as the clear number one contender for a lot of people. Um, 
That's funny it, that you, before the show started, I was like, I think Jim's my number one. Is, is I didn't, it? I didn't, and I had no idea you guys were, were picking. Yeah, we should we should that tries, we should be tries, can be full time bro yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's let's you right <laughs> um Stop. but yeah gem had a really really strong episode where uh, yeah chris uh we're actually gonna get to that in a second where um she was just running circles around the tribe you know with the whole beware advantage uh planning to lie about tim um to the girls really playing solid the question is from Chris, and I'll give this to Troy Zan. Uh, Jem Spradlin, because <laughs> Tro <laughs> Troy Zan, um, you uh, played with Kim, who a lot of people see as one of the uh, best winners of yeah. Survivor, yeah. and you were really the only one shown to take a real stand against Kim right. in right. your season. What do you think about Jem? I think Jem is playing uh, with more diff with more savvier players than Kim did. Sorry. I mean, I know everyone give and Kim played a great game granted and she won. I just think that what she had around her was just way easier. I mean, cat didn't know squat. Kelsey, barely, Kelsey really didn't know the game that well. Christina didn't know at all. Sabrina was picked out of the, she wasn't even, she, they picked her by a mistake online because they are looking for a different Sabrina Thompson. So it's like, and Alicia was like, whatever. I right? So it's like, you know, that wasn't like difficult to have those girls do exactly what she wanted to do to win. So, and I think Jim's got a harder, uh, basically a harder, you know, uh, tribe as far as like, you know, they're a little more savvy. I think they yeah. were manipulate around. I, I don't know. And I just, she, she seems really smart as far as like, there's some, you know, you could tell she's, extra thinking like you know when she hit the box but then i'm she, i think probably part of her was like you know you could tell like her reactions like so, so when someone's bringing up like this looks like it just could have been planted whatever and she mm -hmm. kind of just i mean they edited it so maybe she did say something but she just played that really well and i don't know i feel like out of everybody she just seems like the way she talks to people her social game she's not like over the top like you know l trying to lead anybody and i just feel she's playing really well i and i would agree i, I don't know yeah. if i would be known as a kim spradlin but you know i mean <laughs> i play i mean i i mean i played and lost to some of the best so i don't mind that i mean if, if, pe if people think kim was one of the best and i lost to her and they that they think sarah was one of the best i lost to her and if they think Tony is the best ever, and I beat him. You beat him. <laughs> there you go. You beat the two times. You, you beat two to like, like, a lot of good. So maybe I'm like, uh, I'll still be in like the category of like. <laughs> You're still cooking, Troy Zan. You're still cooking something Troy, good. I'm, little... I'm a big Troy Zan fan. I must admit. Thank I want to see you on a third season. Oh, there you go. You never know. Just fingers crossed. You can't say nothing, but you never know. No. And I, we'll. Um, what, yeah. one more, actually, what were you going to say? Go ahead. I was going to say, Troy Zen, you also mentioned very briefly how, like, sometimes, you know, you'll get kind of teased. And when you look back on how a season's um, edited, you'll be like, hey, that was like a weird, unique winner moment that at first you never saw coming. Uh, there was a lot of talk in the first episode. Jem gives a confessional after the challenge that people view as sort of a winner confessional right um sometimes um in the first episode the eventual winner will talk about wanting to win the season like we think of richard hatch in the very first right, episode right. first season um and you know in sub subsequent seasons you know like fabio's like i don't care what they call me i'm still gonna win right jim had a very similar confessional do you think this mm -hmm. was just put there for the narrative or do you think this was a clue that gem is the winner of survivor 46 well no, well i don't think that they ever blatantly you know when they're ed although i i didn't realize the editing process they basically leave the editing up to like one or two people it's not like jeff's in there and the executive producers are saying put that in put this in take that out i mean unless it's crazy i mean they have a editor that basically says I'm going to show how the season went and I know it went like this and this is what I'm doing. And this is how I'm going to interpret. And this is the music I'm going to play to make the audience think this, but I'm, they really wanted to think that, you know, they're very good at leading the audience to exactly 
the way that they want. Cause, and I can tell that because mm. when the, I played and people would talk about it, I'm like, Oh man, that editors are really telling you guys exactly what they want you to believe. So they only show so much. So I think they did a little bit of both. I think that they, they didn't purposely do, Oh, well, you know, we know she won. We're going to give her like the editors, you know, words. I mean, sorry, the winner's words, but he definitely like has that, feel that look that there's just something that's i can't put my finger on it that she i can just the way that she talks with other people where like she seems like yeah that i can see her winning so, it's right on paper at least right now right. at least right now like i said yeah first happens and then we're gonna go oh <laughs> jim's at the bottom <laughs> it's, right, it's right on paper but could it be right uh in practice We'll see. Uh, we go to Maria. <laughs> Come by my colony, uh, the ad says with the pickup line. Maria moves down to two. Um, no fault of her own, purely because of Jem's uh, breakout episode this episode. Um, but a really, really nice episode for Maria with um, just, just really solid uh, emotional storytelling, having a good moment. The only worry I have with that... She's the one who couldn't get the ring up, right? Yeah. 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 Um, the one thing I worry about, at least with that, is that we saw her talk about that moment, and that was really great, but we never saw victory from that. We never saw a moment where she got some form of like retribution for it, I want to say. Will, what do you think? Yeah. I, I don't know. This was such a weird episode for Maria because – it was positive with the um, with the story, but I feel like this episode wasn't the best for Maria. Um, I think it was a lot more mixed personally because the whole idol thing. Obviously, there's going to be some payoff in the future. Otherwise, you know, they just won't show it. Um, but the fact that she got undermined by Charlie in this episode, the fact that she went for the the beware advantage so brazenly, um, I. I I don't know. I don't really think that was positive from Rhea, and that's why I put her down to three um, okay. below Hunter and Jem. I do think, however, though, that sometimes having a little bit of negativity is good for a new era winner, and this could be Maria's negative episode that she has on a tribe that has no problems whatsoever. And so, who knows? Who knows? That's That's a very... That's a very astute take, and you know, honestly, I uh, I'll show later in the edic. I had her in a positive tone. Uh, with that uh, retrospective in mind, it could be moved to a medium uh, because of that uh, slight underbinding with the idol. Um, yeah, Troy, Zan, any thoughts on Maria? So she got that she got that advantage, right? Was that when everyone was searching for it together? I'd remind, like, didn't she get it? With, and then everyone knew she got it, the advantage? Ever, she found the beware advantage. It said dig below, but there was nothing there. But, if she did point. find the box, she would have the... Yeah, I, I don't know. That I, I just don't... I, I honestly don't see Maria at all. Winning. I don't, really? I, I put her, like, at seven or eight. Like, yeah, I don't... I just don't see that at all. Oh, God. I don't know. Maybe it just reminds me of other players throughout this, you know, years of watching that I just go, nah. She doesn't, have, she doesn't have it. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know why I think that. It's maybe just because, I don't know. Uh, when you do advantages in front of people, I, I even like when they, they do, I, I, it always bugs me when everyone, and they hunt for idols together. It's just I'm like, <sighs> I don't like it either. I, 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 I agree. You use it as yeah. you never like, and you always, if someone finds it, then there's a tar little bit of a target on them. If they don't like, I would never search for an idol with somebody. I might fake and act act like I am. I mean, I did that on my season. I would always fake it. I mean, I had an idol in my pocket, and I'd go out and they'd show little clips like everyone's looking for an idol. And I'd laugh, look at the camera. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't. She's not. She's not showing me a lot so far, so I don't know. I just feel different than. What well, what number would you give her then, uh, Troy? Said would you throw her maybe at like ten and maybe nine? Her like at eight, yeah, eight nine. I, I think that's okay. fair. I yeah. think that's, that, I think that's fair. Yeah, you're gonna hate that's my weird. next uh, stock, by the way. I know who's coming up. 
and I moved this player very high. It's a bit of a crackpot theory. Oh, you know what time it is. Uh, <laughs> like to brief you. Um, uh, last episode, we uh, made a graphic because Will likes to have crackpot <laughs> theories, as he so yeah. calls them. And so, here it is. <laughs> this is so confusing. <laughs> Troy says is never coming back on his <laughs> What? <laughs> the hell is that <laughs> that is the crackpot theory graphic all right uh, let's move on <laughs> um, oh geez yeah this one i was like god they, I, you know honestly this whole cast doesn't seem that athletic to me honest i don't see yeah i think just, it's better than last season though yeah hunter's, I, hunter's a clear standout hunter, well, yeah. hunter, hunter q is an athlete i mean you know Kevin, a little bit of an athlete. I mean, Tiffany, kind of an athlete, but like, I don't know. I just Ellie's built. I don't know. Can't it, 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 this one here, Mariah? That jumping. I'm like, what? It's almost like it's a it's a it's a strange kind of thing uh, to show on Survivor, and so I gave her an over the top kind of edit because it, you know it was it was. I like that graphic where it's like how to fix it. You jump up on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will, yeah, you said your ranking would be uh, contested. Yeah, so it's it's less about this individual episode, but Mariah's edit has been extremely weird the entire season because she gets so much unnecessary screen time when she's on a tribe with Tim Spicer who has gotten zero confessions across the last three episodes, they are showing Mariah for a reason, and I don't know what it is yet. It could be a winner thing where she is like a controversial, under-the-radar winner who kind of snipes the uh, clear front runners. I back that up by Jeff's speech in the very beginning of the season saying not everyone, like someone has no chance of winning, right? Yeah. So the fact that they're showing Mariah – Every single episode, every single episode, she has something. The fact that she has a weird segment about her not being able to jump. She had a very good premiere episode. Maybe she'll join the infamous no vote, no vote finalists. And I I would respect that, bro. It's, it's really like, like you know, Carolyn got no. I mean, like there's a lot of people that read like you know more characters. They, they and they'll show them, but they they just got no votes. Yeah, I just. Absolutely. I don't know. It's it's weird. It, it's it's a very it's a very puzzling edit. I had her at number one in yeah. episode one. I really loved that premiere, but I moved her down, and I still have her at an eight. But I agree with you. Uh, I'm getting the sense that she's either going to go out uh, like very early on in the merge, um, just as that very traditional uh, getting a decent edit and you're out, or there's something else going on. Well, if she, and, goes, if she goes far, then they'll show even the goofiness stuff. I mean, they used to do that a lot more, where it's like if you made it far in the game, like say the top six, they would just show that top six the entire season just a lot, like even from right. the beginning. And the other people, sad as it was, they just didn't show them that much, and they just kind of got pushed aside, whatever. But more and more, they're kind of like fool, you know, like they'll, they'll show people – that may not even make the merge, and they show them a lot in the beginning, and they just gone. And then, you know, of course, like well, with Bonnie, I, I felt like almost like they had to show a lot of him. There's just a yeah. lot. Of him. Like, just was, you know, he, the million he wants a million fans, and they just, I mean, he just was a player where it's like you know, never, we never saw anybody that really kind of didn't know what he was doing that bad, but really loved the show that much. It was sad to see like a guy like, but honestly. I, I never said this before, but I mean, I feel like Bond is the kind of guy, like if I, he was on my tribe, I'm like this guy's going to follow me and do anything that I tell him. He's and trust me to the end and he'll never yeah. win, but he'll be a, a vote every single time. Like I, I why mean, get rid of him? Like if he does, I'd rather have him not know what he's doing. Cause then I can make suggestions, but I wouldn't be over the top, like Q, like this is what you got to do. And this is what you should do. Cause after a while people, I don't care how, smart or not smart you are with, with playing you you don't like being told kind of what to do ty, that happened to ty kind of a little bit you know where people like didn't know think ty knew what he's doing ty do this ty he's like 
after a while, I was like, I'm not, I'm my own guy. I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So, but he would, he would be like a tie. He, once Ty trusted you, it's like, he'll trust you. And you, and you'll go, he, that bond would have gone to the end with anybody that would have said, you're my guy. I know. He would. And you never know how uh, well, Bonnie could do, and you never know how well Mariah could do. Uh, we could really see her yeah. flesh yeah. out in the next couple episodes into a true star. Chris, I will not put out my mother. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Tim is part of Survivor 46. He did not get eliminated. All right, we move to Kenzie. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. We'll go back to Tim. Yeah. Actually. Uh, we won't ignore Tim. Tim, again, just nothing, man. And it's so unfortunate when you get just nothing because he hasn't really got much of anything the whole season right not not yeah anything. and i i want to talk about the secret scene that we got showed because it was a very really it was a really cool secret scene about tim and uh his emotional connection back home and just thinking about home and it's an unfortunate trend this season that we've seen where a lot of the players a lot of the moments where we think we'd want to see on the show we want to see it live we don't get shown it and tim's was no no less than that it was very important and in my opinion it should have been in the episode but the fact that it isn't means bad things for tim and also i want to bring up the intro um i don't know how much to believe this but last season you know all the pre-mergers were shown to be very muddy you know, kind of disgruntled. Uh, Tim was pretty muddy in the intro, along with Hunter and Venus, of all people. Um, I do think we're gearing for Sega going to Tribal this upcoming episode. I think... Ooh, hot I, that, baby. I don't Would know. Would you I, say it's a uh, crackpot theory? <laughs> It has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay, crackpot. <laughs> All right. Do you have your own crackpot theories, Troy Zan? About yeah, like, any crackpot theories thing? about this season? So, what's a crackpot theory? What is it? Like, <laughs> explain that to me. <laughs> what, what uh, it's no. just like it's just uh, not like a hot take, but like you know, you know, when you're ever like thinking about Survivor and you're like, this is going to happen, like something that's kind of absurd. But just a little plausible. Like, what if Yanu wins out in the pre-merge and then Banu makes it to the very end? Like, that's kind of like, like a, it's not like a one in a million. It's more like a like, one in ten. Like, 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 like the crazy theory. Like, what this? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Any crazy uh, theories? Um, yeah. Somebody comes back from Ponderosa and re-enters the game. No, Stilinski. Stilinski. I got a good ball. I got a coconut. No. <laughs> He's not good enough. No, it would have to be like a Banu comes out of it. Oh my like, God, Banu! So it's weird, like the twist in the game. Oh, by the way, and guess who's on the boat? And Banu First comes in and the outcast out, out of his mind, like losing his shit because he's so sad, but he's so happy to be back. <laughs> I I would love to see it. We are going to take a quick break. We've had a little bit too much uh, crackpot theory. Um, we are going to get an ad from the legendary KT Designs. Hi, Survivor Now podcast listeners. I am Katie from KT Designs, better known as Katie Tedesco Art on both Instagram and Etsy. I have been designing and selling Survivor products for over seven years at my Etsy shop, including replicas like hidden immunity idols and Survivor trading cards with all of the players' stats on the back. I am so grateful for Survivor Now for giving me the shout out and helping me reach even more super fans. I love listening to their podcast. So if you are looking for some really unique reality TV products for yourself or to give a super fan in your life, come check out my Etsy shop at www.etsy.com slash shop slash katietedescoart.com. There you go. Get some good stuff. Trading. I want to understand trading card. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can get some, maybe you get some Troys and Idols, some Troys and Idols. I who made Survivor Puzzles send me one from Etsy. He's, he. Makes yeah. like, sent me like the te- yeah like that yeah like I, well, I have a tree 
I have a tree, and I also have one that's got the star. I mean, they're both from my season, and then I bought the the like uh, tower where Brad won the final challenge, and I sent that to Brad. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. We are on Yanu, 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 without a Banu. Uh, Yanu, uh, Kenzie's like, I don't want to play with you anymore, Banu. Um, and Kenzie to me, uh, we found her at kind of the same boat, Will, in the past couple episodes. We've really kind of not ruled her out, but she's definitely on the lower end of contenders. But I'm reconsidering a little bit. Are you? I, yeah, I I don't know. Because they show us so much of her, and they keep saying she's this big threat, and yet they don't do anything about it. And part of me believes it's, you know, it's Q's downfall, right? Q goes home when he should have taken out Kenzie. Um, but part of me believes that Kenzie, this is Kenzie's story in a little bit of a way. How many are left on that purple tribe? It is down to three. three. They're gonna. Then they're not gonna play. They're not gonna do a challenge with three people. You think there's a swap? I just feel that something's gonna. I mean, I I don't see it happening. I don't know, maybe, but I I just don't see him doing a challenge with three people. Could be a crack. Oh, even they didn't show us. Oh, you could be. No, I won't. I won't do that. Don't play the thing. Um, (laughs) Crack (laughs) pot. You get it. You're you're part of us now. You're part of the yeah, stock market. Yeah, yeah. Now it's four Over tribes. Time. It's never been done before. Four tribes. What the shit? <laughs> uh, we. I mean, we definitely, we definitely could see um, a swap. We could see a reorganization. We could see how many Johnny lose again though. What's the total of players left? Or fourteen. Fourteen. So he can go seven. seven he can go to seven seven. Absolutely. Okay. That would we'll be. Well, what do you think about Kenzie? I think Kenzie, it's it's hard to gauge because, yes, she's gotten a lot of screen time. But how much of it is because it's Kenzie? And how much of it is because Yanu is just constantly losing? She had that rivalry with Banu. I think, honestly, Kenzie is either going to go out, you know, a little early in the merge. Or she could be the uh, fallen angel of survivor 46 that is what i was thinking i have a little suspicion that she is gonna make it far to fifth or fourth and get snubbed out right at the end much akin to carson in a, yeah much or in a sense tie from game changers you know not necessarily the number one contender but had a consistent showing throughout you know he was pretty prominent on the screen um troy zen do you have any thoughts um i think that she's getting shown a lot only because they've been losing and okay. they're going to show that way more than the other you know just because that's what they do they have to show who's going to maybe go who's going to you know it, it, they just spend a lot more time on it so they're giving her more air and she's very opinionated so they're even going to get more she talks a lot with her hands. More than Q and Tef- Tiffany, I feel like. So, um, but I don't think she has it enough to be tone it down enough at merge where they're gonna be like, no. Plus, she's gonna go in with low numbers, which isn't Absolutely. gonna yeah. I find somebody like, listen, I'll I'm your extra person number, which that person can stay for a long, long time because they just kind of take you along. You're like the fifth vote all the time, but like and at some point, you either find an idol or do make something crazy happen. But it's it, when you're when you go into a merge and you're just low numbers, you have to wait. You have to bide your time. There's really nothing. You can't play that hard. You just can't you can't make a lot of suggestions because you're just not in a control position. So she's going to go into a merge in a not controlled position to me. So Absolutely. she's gonna, yeah. And I mean, I th- yeah, I think that's a. Yeah, I think it's an unfortunate result of no uh, tribe swaps. I mean, and we'll we'll move on to Q here, who has a very similar graphic to Kenzie's. <laughs> um, um, but no tribe swap certainly doesn't help, uh, especially in a scene like this, because um, you're you're right, Troy. Zen, you go in a merge with low numbers. Uh, not a lot of people 
uh, supporting you that have known you. And not only that, but Hugh and Tiffany's uh, closeness has been outed to the other tribes. Hugh Hugh has a strong alpha personality where he's a type A guy where it's like, you know, I'm the athlete. But he's also, I could tell by the way that he talked to Banu, even though Banu needed me that you can just tell he has that personality where it's like this is what we should do this is what you should do Mm -hmm. i don't think he can change that way i mean everyone thinks they're going to change their personality when they get out there i'm going to play like this or i'm going to do that i'm gonna lie your real personality on you might be able to fake it for five six days but guess what after you know day seven the whoever you are inside not this outside facade, because we all do it in our own lives. Like we present ourselves to the world as this person, but there's a true person inside that that's the real person. So that's the people that you end up seeing on Survivor, you know, and he's got a personality that I think is can't tone it down and to, to not be like the, the leader guy. Yep. And it's yeah. like, gonna hurt, it's going to hurt some people like now nah, he wants to be me to do that. Okay. He's, he's, He's too strong of a personality in that way. Got to go. He's not even, Will, even killed to me. Absolutely. Will, do you agree? Yeah. I think the, the biggest indication of Q's personality really being his detriment is when he has to get voted out after losing the challenge. I think that yeah. it it sets up Q as a guy who's going to want to be like this big leader. And I think in a tribe like Yanu, he has a place there because they needed that sort of guidance. They needed a leader because right. you're just losing every single challenge. And so I feel like it's easier for everyone to look the other way when Q's doing that. Yeah. But I think going into a merge, he's going to have to dial it back. I also think not having a swap really hurts Yanu in general because, you know, Bonnie went on the journey, talked big about Q, Tiffany, and Kenzie. And now they're going into a merge having to convince you know, what is it, 10 other people that they're not these big targets? If there was a swap, the numbers would be a lot less. And so yeah. it'd be easier for them to convince, you know, just like three other people instead of six other people that they're not a big target. Well, if um, you're smart, you can break off from somebody. Like, so Q and and Tiffany go in and people are like, well, I know you're together. I, you know, you can easily go, well, listen, everybody in each tribe is together with somebody. So it's like, we're not the only, like you get close with people. So I could say, listen, everybody gets close with one or two people. That's what, but listen, I'm not, I'm playing by myself I, and, and I'll prove it to you. I'll prove this to you right now. You want to vote her out? Let's I'll vote her out. And if you do That's vote true. her out once she's gone, then if she did get voted out, I've just proven to you that I'm playing by my own game. So you can do a quick switch. If you, someone thinks that you're with somebody. Yes. Absolutely. And I, th- I think Tiffany has the potential to do that as well. And I mean, exactly. this episode, um, we still get more from Tiffany, which is great because I think she's a great narrator. Um, but she's just sick of Banu to the point where she just goes, all right, you know what? I'm voting for you and I'm just going to tell you your face. And, you know, I, I said we would talk about the days later because uh, it's 26 days in the new era, new era uh, since 41. And Troy saying you've you've gone the full 39 days. Is there a re, is there a true difference that you see that you feel seeing this 26 days compared to your 39? Yeah, I can see it on just the way that um because you're shortened, you feel like you gotta play a little quicker. And there's just no way to simulate. 39 days of no sleep when your brain's not functioning and 26 days. It's just, you can't simulate that. You can, Jeff can say, we'll give you less food. They're still eating. They're not starving. I mean, we were starving too, but it's like you can't, and you can't simulate where your brain is on survivor. You're, it never stops. So you're always wondering what somebody's doing. So you're always paranoid. Someone gets up at night and two people walk away. What are they doing? Another something happens. What are they doing? You know, did it, did this switch? Did that switch? Are we real estate? Are we staying together? Are we not? So, you know, if you do that for 20 something days, great. I mean, I'm, we're just getting started on day 20 something and they're almost towards the, and they're like going in towards the final push. And I'm like 26. I, I played 30 days my first time and 39 seemed like an extra two months. Like it's that hard. Yeah. It's really dragging. And your brain's not functioning as, as well. So you're not 
communicating as well. You're not strategizing, you know, thinking differently. You, you can't do puzzles as well. Like you're, you, the challenges are more difficult. You know, you can't, your body's just in a different mode. And you can tell, at least I can, I can tell by watching. I don't, you know, I know they don't want to change it. I, no, no, 26 days, it's what it is. It's, you know, we'll deal with it. We'll, we'll make them starve more and we'll make it harder. And, but I feel like even this new era, they're giving, they got way more clothes than us too. They might, <laughs> they might be like, oh, well, they haven't had a fire for however many days. You can live without a fire. They guys got hoodies and jackets. I'm like, shit. I sure, can't sure said you had khaki pants. Like, that was about pants. all you got. <laughs> I didn't call me Bahamas shirt, but no, that's it in the shorts. No, I mean, not, not, no extra nothing. So, but again, I'm like, if you go on Survivor and you don't learn how to make a fire out of bamboo or sticks or something, you're you're just not smart because you got plenty of time to figure out and you can make a fire. And I did it both times with no flint. You it's you can do it. And so, to me, uh, I'm like I don't know. I twenty. It's like saying like, you know, we've always played uh, the NFL game has always been a hundred yard field. And now, out of the blue, we're going to change it to a fifty-yard field, and we're going to call yeah. it the same game. It's exactly the same. Don't no, nothing's changed. The, the guys who played in the NFL, they're going to be like, no, it's a. We used to play a hundred yards. You had to go or drive a hundred. You, now you're only going fifty. Like you, how you tell me it's the same? It looks the same. It sounds the same. It's, we learn the same things. We're doing the same things. It's just not the same. Or it's like saying we're going to cut it down instead of playing four quarters, we're playing three quarters. And we're going to call it the same game. It's just not. I, you know, I would talk. I don't tell the Jeff straight to say, "Sorry, buddy, that you know it's not the same. I know you know it's not the same." <laughs> so, I mean, they simulate to to be difficult. And I feel, you know, like there's nothing that these players can do if they, if someone if someone told me, "Hey, Troy's and you're going back and you're doing the 26 day game." I say, "Great, I I don't care. We'll play 15. I I'm going to play, you know, whatever the rules are." So those are the rules now, and that's what it is. So, I mean, I'm hoping that some, for some reason, CBS says, "Listen, let's spend the extra money, you know, because they're saving a crap load of money." Unless they are, oh, yeah. it's a TV show. Okay. Let's get down to real, real, real reality. They're doing 26 days because it's cheaper and, and it's easier. They, they have all the equipment that's still there in Fiji. That's why they stay in Fiji. They don't have to move any equipment. The, the crew can fly out from LA. That's cheap. They can go 20. I mean, you cut, you cut how many days out? What is that? 14 days? What more? 39. 13, 13 days extra, yep. right? Two weeks. 13 days of production. 13 days of a, of, of a couple hundred, ca- you know, crew, boats, food, lodging, all of that. And then they cut out a final show. That's another chunk of hundred thousand dollars. Like so, they're cutting out millions of dollars. Absolutely. So maybe it's like one of these where, hey, the CBS execs, if we don't cut it down to twenty six days, then Survivor's over. So either cut it down to twenty six and keep the show, or you know, I'm sure at some point, final show they'll do thirty nine days, or hopefully they'll do like, you know, sixty days. 60 survivors. There we go. There. Oh, man. Yeah, oh, that hour, would be man. Bad. Episode. oh, man. Well, Troy said we'd hope to see you there. Maybe, hey, maybe Will and I would join you. Yeah, hey, <laughs> wait, secret Troy, right here. He's, yeah, you want to you want to make the pregame now? Uh, us three? Yeah. Final yeah. yeah. three deal right here? Wink, wink. <laughs> Yo, 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 Troy, then low key though, if you want to vote out Jack, you know, look at him. He's a Don't big you man. Don't you he's like 6'5, very athletic. I'm not 6'5. Um, <laughs> you know, he towers over the hair, so we're matching with the hair. We get the, the yeah. hair. Yeah. No. Yeah. The hair and we both lies. get that well, spirit. I'll just put a you so it won't matter. I got to see how you look in the buff, though. I mean, I don't know how you really look in the buff. Oh, no, I got the buff. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, I got my two buffs right here and my, like, check it out. I, I, it's here somewhere. I don't have the buff collection as good as well. Oh, here it is. I got, I got the. I'm rocking the buff right now. You know, which, you see which, the hair. Which, better. which numbers are we? I can't see the numbers. Uh, 46. This is the uh, Sega buff. The that's, the brand, that's the brand new buff. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Let's check. I don't have old buffs. Sadly, this is Exile Island. I think it's oh, wow. the back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, Terry this, Deets this was one of my buff favorites. I ever wore in my Survivor career, my Manano. There you go. 
And then That's... this is my first merge buff I ever wore. I keep these. I around. Like buff. I keep these around. I love it because it's black. It's cool. Like, plus, I I honestly think that our logo is cool. I mean, that, that oh yeah, it's a cool looking logo. That, that logo with the two people there on the on the island, and I I, th I wear it for like my, my cameo, so I keep them around. I, th I throw on the buff when I do. Cameo. <laughs> <laughs> I have my I have my torch too for my first season. Ooh. Yeah, my original torch. Man, want to see it? Should, should we ask absolutely? To see it? I'm, I'm just bringing it out. Do we want to <laughs> see it? <laughs> do we want to see it? Yeah, I, our, I, Chris, I, Jay, I don't, don't, don't want to see it because it's like it's so damn long. It's huge. Yo, that thing this, is this sick. is my immunity idol from 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 one world. That's sick. And that this, is this, cool. This, this is my actual torch. And I know it's my torch because on the island, I carved my name in it. Oh. So, and then everyone started copying me. And then the producers got mad and said, hey, you guys can't quit carving your names in the torches. I said, but I like it. They didn't this change torch. anything about it, though. And, and, I, nope. and then when I got it, where is it? It's somewhere on here. Oh, yeah, right. Right there, Jeff Prote signed it. Ah, dude. Okay. So I so I was so happy. and I, I know I knew it was I'm like that's oh that that really is my torch. It's like got my name on it. Actually I carved two, two different torches. So somebody else in the world's got a second Troisan torch. That's a that's a couple hundred dollar thousand dollar torch that is, that's that's right it, there. It was at the time it was I think twenty five hundred bucks for the torch. Woo! Troy yeah. Zan, I will give you twenty dollars for that torch. <laughs> <laughs> I took a lot of shit from the show. I got the machete hanging up over there from Game Changer. I took the swim mask. I took like rice bowls. I took the knife that I carved that notched in like each day in the tree. I mean, some shit I wasn't supposed to take. I mean, the producers were like, "What? You took all that?" <laughs> I've got like tons of tree mail that I took, and some people just didn't want. I'm like, oh, give me that tree mail. I've stuffed everything in my bag. I took. I probably got yeah, it. Get the souvenir. Yeah, I got I got a bunch of shit. And I still I'm like, one day I'm gonna make a giant, you know, one of those framed, you know, picture frame with all the shit in it. But for now it's like everything just stuffed in a box, like all my survive. Oh, here's and here, this is something that not many people know. You see this thing? Yeah. Guess what this is? That's a fake idol, is it not? Yep, that's a fake yeah. idol that Sandra made. On Game Changers, oh. they never showed it, and we never—I never had a chance to play it. But I was gonna. She walked around the corner on like day five or six, and Caleb looks over at her and he goes, "What the hell?" He goes, "What's in her shirt? Look at her shirt. It looks all weird." And it was all bunched up and crunched. <laughs> <laughs> Santa, what's in your bra? He goes, "She goes, oh, I'm busted." She goes, "I made it an idol." And she pulled it out. I go, God, "That's freaking pretty good." It's like, yes. I mean, at the time, like. Really, there weren't that many fake aisles. And I'm like, you know, she took shit off the, the torches. And that's when they started putting stuff on torches. And she's so when we were getting ready to merge, we thought, like, we're going to merge. We're going to split up. She goes, I don't want this. I don't want a target on my back. I said, I'll take it. Give it to me. I'll take it. And I thought, like, I could use this thing. So I had this idol and then my real idol that I found. So I had two aisles constantly hiding them, sticking them in my shorts. Going off in the woods, burying him in the ground, taking him out before tribals, taking him out before chance. So every time, like for days, I was switching out these two idols in and out of my pants and into the ground in different places. And so I wish I had a chance to play because it would have been awesome. Like I would have almost played this at the Sri vote out. Like Sri, guess what? I'm going to give this to you and just to keep you safe. And then Ooh, you, you, the most you, man. That's, man, that's, you, wow, that is evil. I know. But then I thought, like, <laughs> The producer actually asked me, they go, do you want to be that mean? I go, I don't know. Should I? I, I maybe I should. And they're like, you don't seem like a mean guy. You're the audience isn't going to understand. <laughs> so Dealing with the devil, Troy. I basically <laughs> kept it, and then I'll, I'll keep it forever now. I always tease Sandra. We, whenever we do, like, podcasts or something, I was like, Sandra, I still got your, I still got your eye, Lo. <laughs> All see. right. Let's hit up the tier list real quick. Not a lot of crazy stuff going on in Survivor 46 land. We only got three people with a buy, and that is Jem, Maria, and Mariah. The ladies of Sega doing well. Everybody else is at a stay except for Liz, Soda, and Tim, who, why do you have it? Uh, Will, do you have any thoughts on the tier list? No, I think now 
again, now that uh, Bonnie is going, is kind of like the end of an era for Survivor 46. I feel like we're going to be due for big changes and look out for the merge. As Troy Zinn's always saying, you know, you can't really predict the winner pre-merge because it's just like if someone on Sega wins, it's really hard to tell because Yanu's getting all the screen time. Uh, and Troy Zinn, just to explain the tier list, basically, um, after every episode, if someone has a good episode, then we give them a buy. If it's just an all right episode, it's just a stay. If they have a bad episode, it's a sell. Right. And there's different like tiers of how much you want to buy and how much you want to sell. And right. then the slashes are just like they have no chance. And so, yeah, yeah, Tim at the bottom. Yeah. yeah poor Tim. We don't have much to say about Tim, unfortunately. We don't have a lot to say about Tim. That's always tough, too. Like, if you, like, if you, it was in, you know, when you're on the show, you're thinking, like, you know, constantly filming, so you're thinking you're gonna get shown something, and then you get nothing. You're like, oh god, she's really nothing. I know, yeah, yeah, that's rough. We move finally to the edic. Uh, we'll give some quick notes. Highest visibility, bonnet with a ten. Right. Um, yep. Lowest visibility, Venus, Ben, and Tim with a one. Ben could argue for a two. Uh, with I give him one. Two. Okay, Have I, I talk- think that's fair. Yeah, we got to see well. I, I, I think almost can see Ben almost every episode, a little bit of him anyway. So, just, just, a yeah. bit, just a little bit. Best rating Tevin with the CP positive, which is uh, just really, really great strategic storytelling in a positive light. Uh, and Maria with a middle of the road positive, although Will's uh, earlier comments about Maria could, could definitely see it being a middle of the road medium, which is mm-hmm. decent strategic. Just, exactly like middle of the road you're talking about yeah. the game you're narrating you're narrating absolutely uh the worst rating banu with over the top medium again over the top you get some positive you get some negative and soda with middle of the road negative uh really kind of bashed on by your tribe and not in a good spot and then some key takeaways uh tevin maybe a little too perfect uh really nice strip so far of a great four episodes could turn out bad. It's a little too clean. Gem too good too early. You know, we could be getting the really, really strong gem in it, but could it be too much? And Kenzie, she's the villain, sure, but she's also the narrator. And they want us to see her journey on Survivor 46. Will, any thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, again, I I, I believe Maria is more of uh, the uh, medium. Um, and other than that, though, it's kind of the same old edge that we've been having. All the main characters are still being the main characters. We still haven't seen anything from Tim um, at all, which is very unfortunate. Uh, I will say, uh, Troy Zen, I don't know if you will agree or disagree. I think I might have ruled out anyone from Yanu winning. I don't think we're getting a winner from the Purple Tribe. Yeah, I don't see it. That I mean, the maybe. I mean, the, to me, if anybody, it's Tiffany. The, yeah, you know, that, and I what, agree. Those, yeah, I agree. yeah, I mean, yeah, Tiffany. My my, my top would be for sure. I I'd say Jem. I, I like Tevin up there. I um. I, Hunter may, but I don't see Hunter's going to go too strong. And then maybe Charlie. Ooh. All righty. All righty. So we got Jim, uh, Tevin, Hunter, and Charlie as Troy's I mean, top it, four, would you say? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say so, probably. Yeah, I mean, I just looking through. I mean, Ben could sneak in there somehow, like for some reason. He seems like he's not as good. Goofy rocker guy. He's he's gonna he's more he's gonna more play. You'll see him more of a gameplay coming out. I just I don't know how much he. he, he sometimes they'll they'll show in later episodes like oh yeah I'm the real super fan I know everything about Survivor and you're like oh wow, he surprised me like I, you seem like you didn't know anything and all of a sudden you know a crap load and you're super strategic. Mm-hmm. You know, everything changes at the merge. Everything does, and we are probably one episode away we got next week and then we're probably in the merge and probably merge at 12 all right merge at 12 merge, merge at 13 12. it's the merge atory yeah merge, the, and the then the merge. You never know they only throw in the old monkey wrench and like everyone thinks that they know something and i'll say oh no you don't know squat 
<laughs> that's that's how it is on stock watch we we believe we know everything and then all of a sudden our number one or my number one pick gets sniped tim could early. go home next episode i mean we we give some good guesses here but no tim, tim's going <laughs> yeah, with the new era like in old school like i mean when i first played it was like you know we just knew there weren't that, that many idols out there there's no advantages no extra stuff like so you just if you are a good player and a strategic person you that's how you won i mean you didn't have to like all of a sudden someone breaks out a, oh and this is a this takes away your vote or this does this or that you know like there's extra stuff that you can't keep track of. They just have no idea of knowing. So like it was a game that was played in a sense, it was more standard, like, okay, mm -hmm. there's going to be, you know, a vote out. Jeff tells us before the season, there's no um, exile Island or extra, none of this, you know, they tells you before. So I knew it was like a straight, if you get voted out, you're out. You're not like, and there's, you know, not any extra idols going to be popping out of nowhere and there's no advantages and there's no, um, you know, you know, where, where someone finds an idol and then they can idol out an idol or whatever the hell they had that one season where it's like, you, if you play an idol, I can take away your idol. I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, what's the point of finding an idol then? Like, if you don't really, it's easier to play with it without these like magic stuff happening that out of the blue, it's almost like a little more luck now. You have to have a little more luck now than you did before. Before, if you were good, you were good and you got to the end. And it was because of your strategic play and your social game and a little bit of like, you know, challenge stuff. Now it's like 50% luck because anything can pop out of nowhere. Really? I, I, I agree with that. I think, I mean, all of the, even the best players say it's mostly luck. You could have the best game. You could have the best, whatever. Um, you have to, and even Sarah tell, I talk to Sarah a lot too, all the time. And she goes, listen, I had a perfect storm. You have to have a perfect storm. You have to yeah. you, you roll the dice and take the chance. And if it works, it works. Okay. And then you go to the next step and then that worked. And then that worked. It's like the perfect storm. It all worked, but it's like one little thing went wrong. Then boom, she would have been, she said, I would have been gone and no one has seen anything. So it's yep. like, and everyone has a chance at that. Like everyone's playing kind of their own game and you're, you, you know, we're only seeing, one per one or two people's games while we're watching it where everybody's game is going on they just they can't show it i mean everybody's got something going on everybody's got conversations happening that we just don't see so it's like you know who's got the perfect storm you don't, you don't see it till the very end and they edit it because they're going to edit for the the winner and two and three and four you know you truly yep. never do no yeah you don't <laughs> well, it's why we watch? It's why, Jack, watch. it's why people watch. They're like trying to guess. You know, it's, it's part of the thing. Yeah. That's that's the fun we do. We try to guess and read into stuff. And we yeah. hope we're right. Will Troyzan, Jack Troyzan. This has been the stocks. Troyzan, you don't. Yeah, you don't have to do this in front of our guests. We will do it in front of the guest. Okay. Do you both have anything else left to say? I have a question for Troy Zan. Okay. Question. If you could pick one person on this cast to play with, right, and just a blank season, right, let's just say you've never played Survivor, right, they've never played Star. You, you don't really know their game, but if you could pick one person you'd want to play with, who would it be? Well, it's tough. <laughs> that's like, like, if I've never played and they've never played, how would I, I mean, how Oh, that's I, fair. Yeah, never mind. I mean, how the hell? Returnee. I mean, if, if I play and I just could pick somebody... I'd pick either uh, you'd pick Will and Jack. One person? Yeah, one one person. Banu. Banu? Yeah. Banu. Yeah. <laughs> Comes he, first. He, he would be the person that is like just easy enough to talk to. He's the super fan. I mean, if he knew I had played and he's on my season, like fans versus favorites. And I buy you up with that guy. Oh no! Oh, oh no! <laughs> no! We lost at the beginning and yeah, yeah, but I, 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 like I would like to play with Jim. I think she's smart. With Jim, all right. Yeah, Jim Spradlin, bro. Yeah, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jim Spradlin. Jim Spradlin. All right. Well, we thank you all for coming with us on this journey of survivor stock watch episode four 
it has been fantastic. Uh, we, we thank everyone for commenting, and most importantly, we want to thank you, Troy Zan, for coming out to the show and being our first guest. Yeah, I love Ooh. it. It's great. Okay, there you, there you go. For, you know, first is best, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. We loved you on the show. Keep your, eyes and, ears you open. Keep your eyes and ears open. Absolutely, man. I we thank you all for your time. We truly appreciate it, and we will see you next week on Survivor Stopwatch. See you.